face, Lord. Alrighty. So today, sorry about the noise in the background, I don't know what that is. Um, I want to launch Space Lord again. I've only launched him once on an M motor for my level 3. Um, there's a little cleanup I gotta do, but one of the big things was that launch, the rocket went higher than expected. It went higher than the uh, simulation is. I had at one point corrected that simulation and got it to the right area, but I have lost that updated version of the Roxim file. I have the old Roxim file where this is all built up, um, and I had made some mistake in the weighing, I believe, was most of it, and yeah, the rest of it was the finish is really bad on this because I'm a terrible painter. Um, either way, we're going to re-weigh the rocket. Um, we're going to weigh it in three sections because I don't have enough headroom here for this rocket. Uh, we'll weigh the top portion, the booster, and I have the electronics bay here with all of the hardware attached. Um, the electronics aren't in it, but there's such a small portion of the weight of this rocket, it's not worth the hassle of putting them in there. Um, I do have a scale down on the floor and a better view of the uh, actual thing here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to calibrate the scale or get it close. This is not, this is a 10 pound weight, but it's cheap and not going to be accurate, but it'll be close enough for what I need. So I'm going to switch my scale over to pounds, because this is pounds, but the rest of this rocket I'll weigh in kilograms. And set that on there. Now that's 10.2 pounds, or 10 pounds, 2.3 ounces, which is probably about right. Um, that's just what it's going to be for that weight. Uh, it was about, yeah, that's probably within like 5% or something like that. Um, I just want to make sure that scale isn't crazy far off. All right, all right. So now we're going to measure the electronics bay, which I have here. It has all the hardware in it, but the electronics aren't in it. They don't weigh more than 20 grams. I'm not worried about it in the size of a rocket. We are at 2.196. Kilograms, 2,196 grams for the electronics bay. A five pound electronics bay. Uh, next, we're going to do the base, because it's right here. The booster. Make sure that was reading zero. This is 6,726 grams. 6,726. You should see this on another little inset image. Uh, this has the pairs, the drug parachute in it, but no case. It has the uh, shock cord too. The same here. This has the main parachute um, and shock cord for the top in it. And then we are at 4,684 grams for this. All right. Um, yep. That's going to be it for that. I'll measure the center of gravity when I put together the whole rocket with the motor on it. Um, I know the center of pressure because that's just a calculation based on the shape of the rocket. Um, so, yeah, we'll update the weights in Roxim now. So, we're going to head upstairs and do that. All right. So, here we have the Roxim file for my. Level 3 rocket Space Lord, which you saw downstairs when I was weighing out the parts. And now we're going to go in and we're going to actually see this stuff. Oh, I guess the nose cone was separate. Uh oh. Um, well, it looks like I'll probably have to re redo that instead. Yeah. It's going to want me to do the nose cone separate. Um, well, we'll just for now. I'll go back and fix it, but for now we're just gonna uh, make these two add up correctly. And the nose cone is gonna be more of the weight than the other one. Um, but we'll just split it half and half. Uh, we'll figure out the center of gravity of the whole rocket later and override it. Um, actually, I can just override the whole rocket's 
uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to override the whole rocket's weight. Uh, I got to remember how to do that now. I do need a nose cone, but I can't open up the sustainer. All right. Anyways, I guess we'll have to do it section by section. Um, the switch ring here is actually the whole electronics bay. And this bottom tube is the whole uh, booster section. So, um, is it? No. Yeah, because the fins are all under here, too. Everything's under here. So we can go this bottom tube, uh, and we can do mass override of everything in here. And this was indeed, uh, I think, lighter than actually we had. Um, this mass is... 6726. I don't know why I did that. 6726 grams. Um, yep. The electronics bay. Do a mass override here. This was also lighter than what we thought. Uh, well, we thought it was lighter. We actually measured it at 2,196 grams. And then this body tube should have been measured separately. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to split it half and half. So our top end um, split in half. It was nice, easy math. It was 2,342 for one half of it. And then again here, all right, so this is the actual mass of the rocket, uh, 18.638 kilograms, 0.447 something, um, which doesn't make sense because I didn't put in any 0.4s or anything like that. So I'm wondering if I'm doing something wrong. This isn't overriding the whole mass of this whole thing. So when I do mass override, use that, yeah. Calculated is way lighter. I think that's just the tube. So what happens, because this should be, the whole rocket should be right around 13 kilograms so we got to figure out where our extra weight is being calculated um i mass override this and go zero i bet we lose some no we didn't lose any mass override oh i'm, I'm probably Right. We are working by the right here. We're going to calculator and do the measuring step. Nine six one four six eight four six seven two seven. After six six six, we still got extra mass to go somewhere. Miss one off. We're going to make sure the mass is zero. Set for that. What is the mass override? Let's start that. Mass override. 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 Mass tube. Probably a big one. Thirteen six zero six, and then there's point zero one five. Is going to be just we have fifteen pieces at point zero zero one. All right, so with that, let's go over to our flight simulations. Let's do the actual flight I flew it on, which was a M1600 Aerotech. And the original max altitude was 9,546, but my actual recorded was 10,912 or something like that. Uh, you can look in the video. I think I, I put it up on the screen. Uh, the first level three video. 
we'll launch. Rerun. There we go. That is much, much closer to what we actually saw. It's about 500 feet higher. Uh, this is going to be optimal conditions. Let's uh, take a look at the actual simulation stuff. That's all right. Um, resolution's good. Launch guide is 144 inches. It's 12 feet. That is the length of the rail I was using. Um, we are at about 700 feet. I don't know uh, the actual weather data for the day I launched on. But this is really close to what I actually saw. And I wanted to do that um, because I want to run some other motors in this. Uh, specifically, I have a 98 to 54 millimeter adapter coming from Block, hopefully early next week. So I have time to, uh, to build it and launch this thing on like a K990 Dark Matter. Um, I've only got till next Saturday, the 23rd. 23rd, is that right? Yeah, the 23rd. Um, to see if I can launch this. Uh, my motor vendor, I don't think, has any free grain 98 millimeter motors. Um, and the weather's kind of iffy when you're launching stuff up 10,000 feet or more. Um, but I also wanted to see if I could get any four grain motors and keep it in under our under our waiver. So I have a bunch of motors in here, um, some fun ones. Uh, this is a low key motor, I believe. No, this is an Aerotech motor. Um, one of the six grain 98s uh, and then these are all motors i have decided to try and run so we're going to rerun all of our simulations um highlight them all rerun them boom all right so the n4800 is over our waiver but it looks like I can use the Super Thunder. That will be super fun. Um, I'll just have to get uh, the stainless steel forward seal disc for that. L motors are putting it right around 5,000 feet. There's some Ks in here. And it's all looking safe. Um, that's velocity at launch guide, uh, launch guide departure. All about 35. These two are kind of iffy. Um, well, let's go ahead and actually load up the K990. Um, so choose engine. Uh, K990, right there. Plugged. You got to make sure you select that, otherwise things are going to get crazy. Launch. And this is going to assume I have some sort of adapter in there. Um, we are going to be able to make it off the launch pad. I like to look at 30, 35 miles an hour as my... Minimum, but the K990 will get us off the launch pad at 43 miles an hour, which should be safe. Um, it's only going to go 2,000 feet. If I can get that motor adapter in next week, I will totally do it in this rocket. If I can't do it on this rocket, if the weather is good, I'll still get that motor and I'll launch it in the 4-inch uh, level 2. And that'll go, oh, that's going to be going close to 10,000 feet, I think. Maybe 8,000 feet? I think Ks go about 8,000 feet on that rocket. I'll have to double check it. Um, but you should see a launch video next week, hopefully, uh, if the weather holds up. It is middle of October in Michigan. Um, until then.